Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It is time for episode 39 of the Rocket Punch cast. I am Seth, joined, as always, by my compadres, Mr. Cameron. Hello, everyone. And Mr. Will. Hey, how you doing? We are here to party hardy, talk about video games into microphones. We tend to do that from time to time. And definitely not watch anime. <laughs> no, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't even know what anime is. <laughs> I'm not an anime never, watcher. Never heard of this thing you're I don't know about. what it is. I never mean, I just it. caught up on Dragon Ball Super, so I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't even know what a shoujo is. <laughs> what? What's a shonen? What? I'm apparently kawaii. Okay. Um, uh, notice me, senpai? You don't know any of that? <laughs> That's, you know? Who's my... If uh, Okay, so if you have a senpai... Do, oh, God, what is the word? I'm kohai. losing it. Kohai, thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm not fully gone yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're not talking about anime today. We're talking about video games into microphones. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and talk about the games we've played this week, a.k.a. Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> Very easy. There's no other games. That's it. I mean, we did play this, yes. Yes. Ma- okay, Mass Effect Andromeda. We're a bit of a ways in right now. What does everyone think? It, well, I've I've had time to play it. Uh, I'm still in the, a Nexus. Okay, so yeah, I haven't Nexus. had a lot of time. We are to play not it. going to spoil anything. Also, yeah. So um, you're safe. I'm I'm still in the Nexus. At least my initial impressions right now. The game is fun. The game is cool. I think that some improvements can be made. I think there's. I think that it's not the game itself may not have reached the hype that people set for it before it came out. And I, that's a hard bar to hit. Uh, but the, playing through the game, I like the quest system. There are a lot of menus and stuff. I like the combat. It was fun. Um, there are a lot of menus and stuff. <laughs> like said, there, there are a lot of menus. I think that draws away from me a little bit, especially I've learned, started learning how to do the quest system. You have your priority quests and then you have your other quests, which uh, funny enough, I even on the video gamers of Huntsville Facebook group, somebody asked like, where do all the other, where are all the other quests besides the priority ones? Because I can't find them. And I kind of understand where they were coming from. Yeah. Um, in that aspect, but the quest that I did go on where you basically have to, I don't know if it's spoiler or whatnot, but you, this is mystery. You have to solve about these like panels being blown out and you have to find out who's like hitting them with surges and you have to jump through different parts of the Nexus. That was pretty cool. Okay, it's yeah. going around and doing that and having that mission. I'm I'm really excited to get more into like going down to a planet, setting up outposts and things like that. And, you know, being the pathfinder, I I fully understand. And if we're talking about Mass Effect and drama, I have to bring this up. I understand what reviewers and other people said about facial animations and some of the animations that are going in the game. Um, they're not bad. They're not great. They're not like mind blowing. Although I will definitely say like we've played Horizon Zero Dawn earlier this earlier this month. They those were those are better, but those weren't like the oh my god the best animations in the Her- world. Horizon either. was more like a Bethesda game in a lot of ways. Like you walk up and like the you know the the puppet the puppeteer takes over <laughs> and the mouth moves way more than the rest of the face does. And there's you're like wait a second faces have muscles. And then Zelda came out and it was fucking perfect. So. That game has nothing wrong. Zero issues. Uh, don't make me compare this to Zelda. Because no, I, and, and I don't think it's fair. I like This was a rough time for that to come out. I don't think it's fair to compare Mass Effect Andromeda to... Breath of the Wild. Basically, Zelda 2 reboot. <laughs> Zelda reboot, and then Horizon, which is like in a Witcher 3 level new IP. I, I would just... At least for the facial animation and stuff, like I remember yeah. talking specifically to one person in the Nexus, like one of the first people you meet. Yeah. And like it was it was somewhat kind of rough. I was like, man, that like her face is just very still mm-hmm. and just <laughs> like like yeah. the meat puppet from Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it I I would at least for me, right now, I'm not it doesn't make me hate the game but i I notice it and i understand why like some of those reviews and stuff were talked about there but other than that the story has been intriguing for me so far um i i need to learn more about the combat 
uh, I think in last week's episode, Seth, you talked about, at least from your playtime at PAX, the jet boosters. Those do very make it. Very <laughs> important. Yeah, those are very important. Uh, I've learned to, and I actually kind of like that. I, I've said on here before that I like the Mass Effect 3 kind of action-y part of the combat a little bit more. I really want to get more into like some of the extra abilities because I've, I've learned myself like, okay, I learned how to know, I know how to take people's shields down and I know how to build up a barrier of my own. Now I need to continue evolving and playing. I want to, I want to fight some more people with that. Um, learning, learning more about the combat. Actually, I have a question. Which way did you guys go? Because I went the stealth approach. I'm going very much as the sneaky character. So I want to know kind of where you guys are coming from. I I am I think when I started I I'm the technician. I'm the um combat technician. I have the little zap thing that takes down people's shields and then I ha- I can, right now I can put up the barrier so I can right. hide behind I can create my own cover and hide behind that. I have no biotic powers. I don't know if I will get biotic powers. I just I just I've enjoyed playing Mass Effect. I played with biotic powers in the first trilogy and I'm trying some different stuff. Here for the um, Andromeda. Yeah, one of the big new features is are called profiles, um, and profiles are one of the things I'm most excited for because now you don't have to really pick a spec per se; you can swap between the specs as you go. So, am I going to build an infant- infiltrator? Yes. However, I am also going to build a kind of a vanguard, where vanguard is more shotgun and biotic powers, versus infiltrator is going to be more tech tree, stealth stuff, and sniper rifles. So now I can swap between them. It's great. I can snipe you down to death. And then when you get too close, I can say, I'm going to switch to a shotgun and it made you explode with mind, mind bullets, literally mind bullets. I, I don't know, man. I, I was doing the infiltrator stuff, but uh-huh. I also took biotic powers. Oh, I mean, and that's, that's the beauty of the, And I will say this about it. Mass effect Andromeda is a mass effect game. Like if you are wanting more mass effect, boy, do I have good news for you? It's another God bless America mass effect game. But I think a lot of the criticisms are, it's Bioware people, like, they've, I don't think they've ever been considered a graphical powerhouse studio. They're not a Naughty Dog, they're not a... I I think their graphics, I think the, I think the graphic, graphically the game is fine, it's... Well, I'm talking about the facial animations, like, people compare it to Uncharted, I'm like, dude, that's not fair, like, that's a 10 hour, basically on rails game like that game is very linear in in design like it's you go through a level versus an open world like that that's a weird comparison to make but then also i think they're working with frostbite for the first time this is the first time they've been working in frostbite because ea is all about that now and that's where we saw that however the gameplay itself is super duper fun i want to sex up the aliens check i want to you know get in there shoot powers and bullets and all this cool shit it is there they took a step away from Mass Effect as like the series, so like there's no shepherds, there's no reapers. It is a whole new approach and a whole new galaxy. Um, it's more Mass Effect. It's more Mass Effect, and it's good. It's fun to play. I, at least my impression right now in the first couple of hours playing it is that I would not have had a problem if this game had sat for a couple of a few more months for some extra polish mm. on the game before releasing. Um, I think, I think it is a fine game. It is a Mass Effect game, but for me personally, I don't think it needed more time. I think it could have used a little bit more time. It it, it is, it is an unfair comparison to compare it to Uncharted's facial animations, especially from a very highly touted studio like Naughty Dog, very specialized studio. Yeah. But I think that, I think some of the, I think other studios, I think the Horizon Zero Dawn ones animations have, have been a little better to some extent. I think some of the. Fallout animations and Skyrim stuff has been done a little bit better um, than what I've seen in Mass Effect. But that being said, unless you're really focused on that, I think that the gameplay is pretty fun. It, it's it's Mass Effect itself fills a very niche audience for like a space opera type deal where you're going out and explains in space. You're Captain Kirking these aliens and you're uh, <laughs> you're you're doing it with aliens. That is what you were doing. Apparently, this one's even more. Like, oh, yeah, I've, yeah you, get I've some, heard. you get some, you know, you know, <laughs> but I think that, um, at least my impression of it so far, I'm having fun with the game. I actually, I purchased it digitally. Um, cause I was, I was sick and I was sitting at home. I, I don't want to go to the store. I'm just going to download it digitally. I would, lo- I would have been okay, especially after this month so far, if it, this had come out and maybe like, what's Mart like maybe like a May timeframe, maybe like 
give it a few more months to, for polish, but that's me. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a big patch maybe in two to three weeks that fixes a lot of the technical issues that people are running into. Um, also, I expect some gameplay tweaks that will hopefully um, it may make the experience smoother for yeah. people. And the overall game itself, though, I think is a strong start. It has a very strong Mass Effect 1 vibe to it. If as far as tone, as far as a lot of the conversations and things that you're doing, it feels kind of like the Force Awakens felt like a new hope in a lot of ways. Okay. It, it was the same yet different. It's kind of got that same vibe. Like it's you're getting to a new place, you're having to figure out the political climate of that place, and you are having to find out where you as a as a leader fit into yeah. that political space. And that is the fun. That is fun like that is a very it sounds boring, but it's a very fun part of Mass well, Effect. Will, what do you what did you think? I'm curious what you thought, because you didn't dabble too much in the first three. I, I've I do like the combat quite a bit. I have no issues with charging in on some alien people, zipping behind them where oh hey, you can't see me, you can't see me, and bullet to the back of the head. Bye. Um, so the combat is John, good. John Cena, them fools. You can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't think about that. But yes, I was John Cena. <laughs> I literally, I, oh, 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 you're shooting at where I'm at. Invisible. Sneak up behind you and knife in the back of your head. Thank you. Thanks for playing. Bye-bye. Um, so combat is very fun for me. I The fact that I can pop in and out of a cloak just because, yes. So... That's good. Um, so as far as the rest of the game, I got glitched in a bush and I had to reboot my entire PS4 because for whatever reason, quitting it and then reloading my save still had the same problem. Wow. So I guess you had to leave the game. Uh, get out. Get out. Leave right You're now. <laughs> You're done. Yeah. So, you know, that was support us on Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Rocket Punch. <laughs> For puns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you'll get more there. Um, so that was frustrating because um, I like putting my PS4 to sleep so I can actually download things while I'm sleeping. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it didn't take kindly that. That happened four times. Um, beyond that, the new Citadel, uh, not spent too much time in there. I haven't done any of the mini it's quests. It's easier to navigate. <clears throat> That's true. Okay. So like three rooms or three sections rather than the old Citadel where it's like, well, you got to take these two elevators, which are actually loading screens. Remember, <laughs> remember the Mass Effect elevators? <laughs> also, new elevator is the tram. You got to take yeah. the tram. Yes, that is the new elevator. So uh, elevator 2.0 is here. Um, uh, okay. The so, game, it's... Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. My issue is for a game that's been in development as long as this has to have those kind of technical issues out of the gate. And trust me, I understand. It's not Fallout 4. That had a lot more problems out of the gate as far as tech issues. You couldn't even play it on your Xbox, as far as that game went. Well, that's right. You did have you, you yeah. You, you did have so, problems with that. <laughs> so I mean, it's not like game breaking stuff. It's more of frustrations. Um, yeah. I, think, I, I haven't experienced too much of the story to be able to comment on that. I think that it, it's nothing that some patches won't fix. Oh no, yeah. I, I agree. Tech issues will be fixed. It's just that first time machine is yeah. no longer there for that. So yeah, yeah, that, I, I agree. Like maybe maybe another extra month teamed it up a little bit. But yeah, you know, technical technical discussions, great story. Sure. Let's we get to, let's cut through the real stuff. Who do you want to bang? Who oh, you want to bang? Who are you going to bang in this game? And if you haven't gotten far enough in, you may not have met some people yet. Uh, at least from the initial team that I have. Um, I mean, I haven't met anybody right now. It's Cora. Like, it's Cora. Oh, okay. Okay, so first question. Sarah or whatever. They... Or um, Scott. Scott. Sarah or Scott. I went I went male rider. Guy or girl. Okay, male rider. Um, dude. I actually, funny enough, I went and I, I got slightly frustrated and I just went with the stock rider, the stock male rider, okay. because like the character creation was cool, but it didn't. It didn't look like maybe it's the animation thing, and it just the face didn't look right. So I was okay. like, okay, I'm gonna go stock rider. Let's rock and roll. All right, mail rider for you too, Will. Yeah, I as always, fem rider. Sarah's my Sarah's my girl. We roll in the galaxy together. She looks derpy. Her chin is like recessed inside of her head. 
Like there's this one picture and she looks like Professor, Professor McGonagall in like college. <laughs> her, her like lips are really thin and her chin is like pushed way back in her skull. And I'm just like, man, I hope this doesn't carry over to the whole game. <laughs> so rip on that. But uh, no question about it. First off, Drac's my peepaw. Drac is the best. <laughs> I want Drac to be my peepaw. I don't know that I want to do him, but I do want Drac to be my peepaw. I, so far, I haven't met a whole lot of the cast yet. But I am going to do PB. There is no question about it. <laughs> there is no question about it. Me and PB, we going to get it. We going to get some space booty. <laughs> Just letting you know. I'm surprised you're not going after the female Krogan. I have a thing with <laughs> His face right now. <laughs> I, can't. I can't. I don't even know if I can survive it. That's one of those things where like, you don't know if you can survive it and you're too afraid to ask. Well, to ask. You're like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna be fine. But I do love the fact that like the 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 Krogan who's the Krogan who is in the Nexus is hands down the sassiest Krogan ever. <laughs> She's just like, I can't deal with all the shit right now. I'm trying to keep this space station from burning to the ground. What do you need? Oh, okay, you want to help me? Good. Here's what you can do. Get out of my <laughs> office. So like, she is the best. Uh, you'll meet Drac. If you make it down to the first planet, you'll meet Drac. Drac is Peepaw, and he is the best. I want him. I want him and PB are going to be my squad. I'm pretty sure. Okay. 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 So I'll see who else. I know that there's like a new alien that pops in who's apparently a pretty adorable. Yeah. So I have to wait. I, at least from what I've heard, and I haven't. I'll say I've only heard this. Haven't experienced it yet. I am a little a little sad that there weren't many new aliens included. In Andromeda so far, it most most of them are the same, like Asari and the Krogan and the Slarians and things like that, except for the one new alien we've seen and probably the... Well, there's, your, a, there's a new race and there is an enemy race. Yeah. There are some new enemy... It would have been cool to have a little bit more option and variety there. But all things considered, it, it like you said before, this is that like new hope yes. and that Force Awakens it's comparison. It's reboot, that's and, for sure. Like, and hopefully as we explore, I'm sure there will be this will be a trilogy and we'll have more... There will be more races and aliens that we'll get to see in the second and probably third version of Andromeda. Then. Yeah, this one, I, there are definitely a lot of choices to make in this game. I think just about every side quest ends with a pretty major choice. Okay. Like, a lot of the major side quests will end with some pretty morally ambiguous choices. Like, somebody Which did I, something... I, I like. Yeah, yes. somebody did something wrong for the right reason. Like, what do you do with them? Those types of things, right? Like... It's like, not very, like, it's not Paragon Renegade, oh my it's god. Not, yeah, it's not black and white, and I don't, one of the things, I'm actually really glad they moved away from Paragon Renegade, that whole system felt very arbitrary and very, like, it felt good at the time, because we were empowered, but now, like, I feel like my writer is much more closely aligned with who I am, versus what the game wants me to be. Like, I had a lot of anxiety, especially after... So, Mass Effect 1, I went full Paragon. Like, full Paragon. Because that's what I, that, I knew that's what I wanted. And I got to the point in the game, and there's... <laughs> Statue of Limitations is done on Mass Effect 1. So, when you get to the Rex situation, the first time I played the game, I was able to rescue Rex. And, like, Rex did not die. And in my second... Like, looking through the game and seeing, like, oh, actually, a lot of people lost Rex then because they didn't invest enough points into Paragon. So, like, that made me super anxious going into two. Like, oh, my God, I've got to get as many Paragon points as possible early on. Well, they didn't ever do that again because it was kind of a shitty thing to do. But, like, that's something that I'm glad I don't have that anxiety anymore of, like, am I doing the right thing to get the right points? Now it's a matter of what are you, like, is this physically, morally what you would do? And I like that. I like that they've given you more than just, like, good and bad options. They now give you, like, passionate op option, logical option. And then, like, sarcastic option and, like, hyper-realistic option. So there's, like, these four different options and different tones. That, and Because I, I think there are some times when a, a more sarcastic tone is appropriate. Like, you're in an argument and I want to give them some sass. Let me dish out some sass without <laughs> giving me renegade points. Like, I can do that now and not feel bad about it. But then when something serious is going on or when someone is trying to betray me, I can be like, listen, I'm going to pull this gun and blow your head off. Like, get out of here. Like, that that type of seriousness. So it feels much more organic. So if you are into the relationship building and the conversation side of this, I think that Mass Effect Andromeda is a great step forward for the franchise on that. Don't get caught up in the 
animation stuff. Like, really don't. I know that we love to fixate on the technical issues in games nowadays. Like, we really do. But I've run into a lot of technical errors, but not many game-breaking bugs. Like, very rarely do I have to reset the save. In your case, it sounds like the save was, like, that was a bad experience. But most of the stuff I run into is weird cosmetic stuff. My favorite one so far is enemies who just, boop, they pop into their, their ragdoll I, template. On the, on the first planet, when you're going through with the floating rocks and the lightning, yeah, I zapped an enemy who was um, behind some cover. And he literally flew off into space. Like, yes. <laughs> Listen, so one thing we haven't talked about yet, but I'm going to touch on briefly because I haven't been able to dig into it very much. I'll probably have more to say next week is the multiplayer. Okay. The multiplayer is super fun. I'll have a lot more to say on that as I get deeper into it. If I'll say right now, if you liked Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, good news, it's back. It is the same exact multiplayer from Mass Effect 3 with the exception of some new missions that add modifiers, which again is awesome. However, one of my favorite experiences is an enemy was jumping from a roof down to the ground floor, and I used push at the same time they were in the middle of their jump. The push, like, curved up under them and pushed them into space. <laughs> like, the, the body flew up, and I never saw it come down, but I got the points for the kill, so. That's all that matters. They're gone. Bye. <laughs> hey, you know what? They just didn't deserve to be on that planet. Yeah. <laughs> My people need me. <laughs> <laughs> Looks no, like I... Team Rocket's blasting off again. <laughs> Ding. If... If you if you're a Mass Effect fan, go. Get, you've probably already you purchased already Mass have Effect. It. You have yeah, it in you, you have um, it inside you, deep deep inside your PS4. Or if Xbox. we're um, real I'm sorry, I took it that real weird. <laughs> if we if you ha- don't have Mass Effect Andromeda, we're gonna have to show maybe on Rock Punch Live. We'll show some pe- some gameplay off. Yeah, goof off a little bit with that. Uh, e- technical issues are there. They will be fixed in time. Game is good. Yeah, I think uh, like technical issues will come with the patches if you. Regardless of how you feel about patches and day one patches, guess what? That's the world we live. That's 2017 now. Yep. Um, so get used to it. My it's either opinion. that or pixel art. Your choice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I think overall it's a, it's a good entry into the game. I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, most definitely. While we're in space, no one can hear you scream in space. Boy, am I screaming when we bring up this next topic. <laughs> So you were so ready for the let, pe- people on the mic. Let, let me tell you, Seth is so ready for this topic. You have no fucking idea. The best part is this next next topic will eventually lead to him playing it on PlayStation Four. <laughs> so <laughs> you may have seen last week that a poster has appeared online, and I am highly. Sp- suspecting at this point that there may be an official announcement by the time this podcast goes up. If our luck has anything to say about it, the official (laughs) announcement will literally be minutes before this podcast comes up. However, this poster shows uh, four guardian-like structures or organisms. Uh, Three, sorry. Three Three guardian-like, I'm giving you hints. Three guardian-like structures with with the number two. There's also a number nine. The number nine is positioned after September. And on the number two (laughs) is the word destiny. (laughs) Set his face right now. Destiny (laughs) motherfucking two. (laughs) This poster was leaked from a game store, which is a pretty reliable source. For hot video game leaks, this seems to be promotional material for fucking Destiny 2 <laughs> this year. All I have to say is your face of that is priceless. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want. There are a lot of things that are priceful about Destiny. Priceful of zero dollar. Listen. <laughs> this, okay. What, before I get started, what we're going to talk about today is what do we want from Destiny 2? Because we know it's coming. Activision said it's coming this year in their in their quarterly it call. Is. Yeah, it's yeah. coming. This poster confirms it, all but confirms it. I fully suspect a full gameplay reveal at E3, probably on the PS4 stage, because boy, do they have the dick way down there. 
<laughs> Whoa, and yet no one said anything about Call of Duty being on Xbox. Everyone said something at the time. I ignored them because Xbox is better. Um, <laughs> yeah, see, you say that. What's plugged into oh, your TV? Man, right I love to just. I it's love so to, great. I love <laughs> to take just gallons of gasoline into the fireworks factory. I really do. Um, take a smoke break. It's great. Uh, so, Destiny Two will be happening this year. What? What? What do we want? Someone else, please start, because once I get rolling, you better just buckle in. <laughs> All right, so let me start this one off. Um, if they're going to keep the Crucible for their multiplayer, can we please, God, get something other than the peer-to-peer connections? Can we get, like, a central server network um, a la Call of Duty? Well, well, through the power of the Microsoft Cloud, <laughs> God, I don't... It, no, stop. Yes. I think that... If they haven't already, I'm sure they've they had to have made enough money, regardless of how we feel or some people feel or don't feel about Destiny out our listeners there. Destiny has made Bungie oodles of money. It's an extremely popular game. It's been popular since its release. You it's very hard to say that about other games, the division. Um <clears throat> other you games tried. like that. You yeah. tried real hard. I, I tried. The Battleborn, <laughs> one might say. <laughs> but it the one thing that Destiny has for it is that people have still been interested in that game that still has a popular and very rabid fan base. And even to, even to our extent, the fact that, you know, we haven't, I think I don't think anybody here at the table's played Destiny in a while, but the mention of Destiny 2, I think that we've all got the feeling like, yeah, we're going to jump back into Destiny 2 when it comes back. There's still those players out there. And I think that hopefully they take that money and they put it in places that matter, not only just in the server infrastructure and in getting some freaking dedicated servers as 2017 people come the fuck on. Like, seriously, like, I know peer to peer is easy, but if you want the true multiplayer experience, dedicated servers, custom games, it took I'm them so, forever. I'm stepping in because fucking Crucible is on the bottom of my interest. Like, the Crucible is literally the most least interesting thing about Destiny. Fucking Whoa, Halo has on. already been released. Hold up, hold up. We're going to get to the interesting stuff. And then we're going to unleash you for the next 30 I minutes was, and let you go. <laughs> I, have, I have thought. <laughs> Folks is like holding back a caged animal. We just. It's, it's no, 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 no. A caged animal can be contained. It's like holding back a tsunami. <laughs> I would, coming. I would I'm not coming. call you a tsunami. Hurricane Seth's coming, baby. <laughs> I, I would. I would definitely say. Whatever debacle they had with the story in the first Destiny. The debacle was very clear. They scrapped the story a a year before the fucking game came out. And they said, well, what are we going to do, guys? We cut out all the cutscenes. They're like, oh, we'll just fucking draw some more and make it something. That's fine. It's good. We, everyone will love it. We fucking got Tyrion Lannister. He's the robot. What's not to love? That wizard came from the moon. I can't fucking it. I, (laughs) I, I hope that. As far as stuff like story, like we see a little less leverage on the grimoire cards that they have online and inject that more into the story. And it's nothing against those cards, but I want my story in the game. I don't want to have to, I feel like I'm pulling myself out of that universe by going to the computer and then having to read Blore when there are very, like we, it's 2017, we've played games long enough that there are very easy ways to inject that into we, we've done it with quest text. We've done it with cutscenes. Like you can do it. It's easy. Okay. okay I want to talk. This is, this is one I want to talk about and I'm going to be cool guys. <laughs> Trust me. I'm going to be cool. It's not going to be cool. I'm getting my tranquilizer. <laughs> I'm going to be cool about talking about Destiny's story. So here is what you need to do in destiny two. You're right. The grimoire cards or whatever the hell they called them. No, you're correct. That's what they were called. Grimoire cards. Those. Yeah. Gone out O-U-T what that what and at this point I'm going to say what they need no 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 what I hope they've done because it's done now Destiny 2 is done like it is on the road to being finished if it's coming out in September I hope that this time around the focus is on the characters and the story because they have gameplay on lock they have like Bungie was fun to play Right, I think we can all admit that, like, despite its flaws, many, many Bungie flaws, or Destiny. Bun, no, I'm saying that Bungie knows how to make good shooters. Oh yeah, 
They are well versed in that. See Halo. See yes. you, even like the original Destiny. Everyone loved. It, when you go back at the original Destiny reviews. Everyone loved the gameplay. They loved like how tight the combat felt. Yes, it was just a hamster wheel of uselessness, and there was no meaning behind it unless you went to Crucible. But that is a, a subset of gamers that I don't think. The appeal of Destiny was not competitiveness, it was cooperativeness. Like, that was the thing. The front of the box is not three dudes pointing guns at each other, it's three dudes walking in the same direction going to kill something. That is the cover of Destiny 2. So, I definitely want them to focus on player versus environment experiences and keeping fresh content in there. As far as story goes, the stage is set. Like... I don't think you like you've already you've already done a lot of story stuff with Crota and um and the darkness and whatever the other villains, the cabal the cabal like you've set up everything like everything is set for you it is now time for the two towers it is time for the things to happen the giant ass battles to happen and the characters to become the characters right the the fellowship is broken you know like the you know we're done with the character introductions and now it is time to move into the what is the landscape like take a note from mass effect in this like what is the landscape of destiny what is why are these races all together what is the stakes who is doing what and why does it matter like taking get, adding more it, like, i i agree with you the the fact of the story in that especially going into destiny Two, I don't think we need, I don't think people need a rehash of like the guardian story, the, the story of the guardians and the traveler and like maybe a quick overview synopsis, maybe like, yeah, uh, we've seen games that do like the optional video. Do you want to know about what happened in destiny one? Go watch this video. Otherwise go straight into destiny two. Yeah. Like we, uh, even after not playing for a while, we have a general idea of what the, the main, like the villains and the different enemies we fought in destiny were, and we have a general idea of the story yeah. and just like really taking ownership of how that story progresses and goes into destiny two. All I know is that in the taken King, as you kill the dudes that are trying to blow the whole dreadnought up, they send a communication back to the cabal empire. I want to have to fight the entire yeah. cabal empire. I, I, I've waited for that. Like I've, I've been ready for that. I That's... want. I want a, a story based around the cabal, not the darkness, not the fallen. And please, please, can we stop having to deal with Crota and his daddy in the hive? Like, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done with the hive. I'm kind of done with the fallen. Those two can go away. Like the Vex. Let's get the Vex and the Cabal. Let's bring them a little bit more in involved. I, yeah, I think that what will make this game the best is a blend of them all. Like I would, I don't necessarily want the Fallen to go away. I still, I feel like the Fallen is it, they belong in the darkest places. Like at this point, we've killed their dad. You know, they killed their leader. So there should be pockets of them, right? There should be pockets of them left in the dark corners of. Well, I think you're going. mixing... Uh, you mean the hive. The, the hive. hive. Yeah. Hive. Sorry. Yes, the hive. Like, I feel like the hive is something, when I go underground, I'm expecting the hive to uh, to attack me at some point. Um, You're right. The Cabal are... They're, they're space marines. I mean, I just want to play, play space marines. That's it. I just want the space marines to come in, and I just want to kill them all. And when, and when you blow their head off, they get a nice, satisfying pop. <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you. Destiny 1, you don't even need to change that. Give me the birthday explosion. As Why haven't as... they put that in? <laughs> Come on! No, the, I mean, they, they've done a great job. The headshot has never been more satisfying as in Destiny. But I, I think that it is okay. Like the obviously, the Guardian is going to be like the the main, you know, the protagonist of this. But I want what they did with uh, oh, what was his name? The guy that played was played by Cade Six. Cade Six. Thank you very much, um, Nathan Fillion in, in Destiny. Yeah. Good. Every single character that says a word in this game should have that type of character development. And backstory. Like, and I think they've learned a lot, especially because that was one of their big expansions. The um, it wasn't Taken the King. thing. Was the Taken King? King? Yeah. Like that expand. That was great. That built a that built up a lot of what people wanted from destiny in the first place. I think that just by that time it was kind of stuff. It's already started to slip, but yeah. things like putting more in like, if we have those open worlds, that's fine. But putting more in those open worlds, I think there's enough technology to have. Maybe we're leading a little bit away from story here, but quest, okay. qu qu quest, quest tie into story. So like, I would love if 
I'm walking out in the world and there's this band of fallen that come at me and then this item drops and you, you pick up this item and it starts this quest and you have to bounce around in the world and go do that stuff. I, I feel like there wasn't a lot of that in destiny. And if you wanted, they, they improved their quest system greatly in the taken King and other expansions. Mm-hmm. But if you wanted to do and get those quests, you had to go to the, this, what, what was the Citadel? The, the main place where you travel, the tower, the ta- you the had tower, to go to the yeah. tower and you get the quest there. Like, I think I think Bungie has enough people on their team and also there's been enough examples out there to have those fluid quests and things like that where you're not always having to talk to these three or four main people to get your quests like scatter it around like maybe this Joe Schmo beggar person in the tower is like hey I'm looking for my daughter's doll you know we we travel up here from the planet and we need to get it and then you go get it and it opens up this huge backstory about this alien who's trying to take over the area and you got to take them down like yeah. uh, that, that I, I want to see that type of fluidity in the quest and the storyline systems yeah i think I that it's totally great to segue into gameplay at this point because like story we know we want more story and we can speculate for days but we know that the template is there gameplay wise you're right. It it just needs better loops. We don't need to run the same strike over and over. We do need more random events. I think that random is the word that would best describe what would make Destiny great. If they could find a way to do like challenge dungeons uh, or the um, take Nephilim exa- Rifts. Take, from- take examples from Diablo or from World of Warcraft as far as their dungeons. I don't like, especially if you're approaching those strikes in the raids, Will, I think that Jumping through those is not a problem, but as far like I think some of it's like some of the loot, like making that loot more rewarding when you're getting it, figuring out whatever their light system is. I would love to see a, yeah, especially as far as gameplay goes in the loot, like a much more Borderlands approach to some of the loot, like randomized loot, like like randomized loot, and like, even like going through World of Warcraft when you go. Th- when you go through dungeons, you each boss drops like a. Spe- you have this loot table, yep. yeah. That like each each boss may have a chance for dropping, and I think to some extent that's kind of there now in Destiny. I haven't played in a while, but is, is there in, in, a, in a way, yes, that's there. Um, but uh, like it, I want w- the problem with strikes for me was the was the going back to like the bullet sponges things. I want to those weird. Things that you have to do in a raid where you had to go jump on this person and jump across this and kill the ogre before the the, the, the thing bomb pops. Explodes. That yeah. they, I think they need to bring that into strikes in much smaller formats. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't. I don't want them like for people who can't do raids and don't have the six friends. Like make that into strikes and make smaller versions of that for your two friends that you yeah. got three can go into. Um. So speaking to that, they actually did a strike that was like that. And you had to have two guys cover you while you ran an orb back and forth, like, back and forth. Th- and that was the that PlayStation was, exclusive one, was it not? On Taken King, yes, it was. And that was the Vex uh, strike for the Taken King. And that was, I loved that. The problem, like my problem with that right there was that that was the last boss fight. And all the other boss fights before or, that were bullet hell. Bosses. Yes. Yeah. And like, why do I have to work to get to the end? I want, I want to feel in destiny Two. I want those strike challenges. Like I felt, and this is a very unpopular opinion for world of Warcraft fans, but cataclysm dungeons in world of Warcraft. Yeah. When they first came out and they were super fucking tough, but like it, it was, there was coordination. You had to like, okay guys, this boss, here's what they do. We have to coordinate. And it, and it felt so satisfying when you got that. And that was just the first boss in, in the dungeon. And you got that done. You're like, yes, we took him down. Let's see what loot we get building that loot up. And you know, you may spend that time of farming that first boss for a little bit, but you'll get enough loot that you can take the second boss down and the third boss down and so on and so forth. Um, but I like it, it bums me out. I love that strike. I love that final boss where you have to take the orb and walk across. It, it was so hard, but why did it have to be the final boss? Why can't it be the other bosses that not only that? Why was it the PlayStation mechanics? exclusive one? Because oh, that's I would like that's, to see that's fine with me. I'm okay. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, I no. would like to see a departure from that level of exclusivity. Like, I think it's fine to have some exclusive gameplay elements. That you, you again, I, you want the check to clear, so do what you need to. But it that one, I think here's what I will say about that 
This game should ship with seven strikes. They should be engaging. You've had enough time. They should be good. They should, you should, everyone should get seven strikes. If you want to do an eighth one for PlayStation, that is fine. You should have information about a raid going live within the first month. Like the raid doesn't have to go live very quickly, but you need a raid up within the first month. So, so Warcraft does it, yeah. And then the, at that point, there needs to be some type of communication about what is coming. And I'm not talking about Sparrow Racing. I am not talking about Evergreen or Silver Free, whatever the fuck their auction house is. Eververse Trading Company. Eververse Trading. I am talking about, great, here are seven strikes. The next one will be available in the next two months. Like, I remember uh, uh, Gears. I believe it was Gears. Gears of War 4. They said, we are going to come out with the Gears of War 4. It is going to ship with this many maps. Then we are going to release one map every two months for the next 12 months. That is what that is the level of transparency and commitment that they need to make to Destiny 2. And I'm not saying like one every two months, but like they need to say, we have three more strikes planned and they will be coming out in three months, every three months. Like when, as we've heard the past year or so, people talk about their expansion plans, which I'm sure there will be an expansion pass for this. Like you're paying, you pay an extra 20 or $30 and you within the next year, within the next 12 months, you're going to get four new strikes. And two new raids. I mean, I'm not joking. Destiny should be, for this generation, what Call of Duty was for last generation. It should be the powerhouse, the undisputed powerhouse. And it is as far as sales, but reputation-wise, it is not. Destiny will be forgotten if it fails. Like, if it if it does not live up to its original promise of being a true, like, big game. And I understand, like, that's a tall order, but also, like, you... Have had a long time to do this. You've got, you know, I, I understand before you like basically scrapped the story a year before it came out. So you had to make do with what you had. But now you have had a full, I believe, what, three years, two years? They've had teams working on this for at least two and a half to three years. I, I think longer than that, Maybe. only because okay. uh, it got delayed a year. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They've been working on this since like the, the about halfway through Destiny's life cycle. They started working on this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so they need they now it may have only been a small team doing planning that kind of stuff, but this game needs to when it ships, be well, they, they've got their engine like oh, maybe tweak it up a little bit, but they've yeah. got no they're using a different engine for Destiny Two. Oh really? Yes. Okay. Um, and the reason why they're doing that is this this engine <clears throat> is slow. If you hit the option button or whatever it, the equivalent is on the Xbox to go and change a weapon takes way too much time. And so that kind of thing needs to be addressed. I think they'll stream. I think a lot of that UI stuff, like I loved the UI with the cursor. Oh okay. no, I, I'm that cool was cool. With, I'm but cool yeah, I see UI. what you're talking about. There, I'm talking yeah. the back end systems. The what makes that game tick? That is that game is unusable without this. Because if you can't change your weapons quickly, and it's say you're going into this encounter, and all of a sudden, oh, this guy's got a purple shield, and none of my guns are purple; they're all red. Now I gotta go switch to purple. It's it gonna just, take me forever, and I die. They need to copy profiles. It, like, and it, it's funny enough. I like. I would love. I didn't even have to copy profile. I would like to see them as far as a gameplay approach for me. I, I would love I, what I wanted Destiny to be, and I think it has grown to that to some extent. But there's still some kind of growing pains that needs to make. Is be the first person shooting World of Warcraft. It, it needs for, to be for the, console. That's yeah. that's what I want. That's what I've wanted from Destiny. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what I'm hoping, you know, I'm not hoping as much as I did in the first time, but like These I'm watching tempered. for destiny to yeah. Yeah, I, tempered. Expectations. I'm saying a lot of things that I'd like, but I have very tempered expectations and I want like Des I bought a next gen console for destiny. Like I bought my Titanfall bundle for destiny during the announcement, right? They didn't even show anything yet. This was before everything. And then that happened. So like this time I'm going to be watching coverage i'm going to be watching streams i'm going to be looking for what is there but i have a feeling i just have a feeling that they are aware of all this and that their messaging at e3 is going to be very clear and like i really do feel like the redit this is either going to be a redemption story or a cringe fest it's gonna be one of the two all i know is that the guys in the pr team need to give deej and cosmo more things to talk about because the more you get your community engagement guys out there and involved in the community, the less likely you're going to have that post taking King launch of where we just had black. And, and I agree because they had, they have, 
they have a Thursday, like a Thursday post that goes up every Thursday, like Thursday yeah. night, Friday morning. It goes up to give to give you an idea of what's coming up that week. Maybe additional content that's hiding up. I just don't like. We can. We need clear, concise communication. We don't need communication blackouts. Yeah, you can't go. You can't for a game that Destiny's trying to be. You cannot go blackout for a month or two months with other than just like. Hey, hope everybody's having fun. Here's some user created content. Even if it's just something like, Hey, here's a behind the scenes thing of what we're working on. It may not be out for the next two or three months, but to give you an idea, here's some new ideas that we found out this week, or maybe next week we don't have anything right now. Then the week after that, Hey, we got something new. We want to show you something tease, you know, a little, little tease. Yeah. I agree with you there. I think that they need to be very transparent on the roadmaps. Um, I think that, again, I think if there was a random component, like a random dungeon generator or something that you, or the strikes had some random components to them, it would really help in the longevity of the PC. One of the cool things about, um, some of the World of Warcraft dungeons would be, there were some dungeons and Will, I'm looking at you because you do remember, were bosses would change depending on certain scenarios. Yep. Also, some raids had that happen every once in a while. The, the ultimately yes we need things to change based on the order you approach things should occur differently like yeah. like maybe you have like this vex hive mind in a in a strike or a raid and depending on like one each week it has three different options and then you don't know what that option is until you get into the raid and it's like okay the green the green boss is coming we have to do this strategy or the red yeah. boss is coming we have to do this other strategy the other thing they do is the nightfall strikes the modifiers they do on those you should be able to turn those on as a team if you're grouping up manually on other strikes regularly just to see. Give yourself another level of challenge. That way you're not stuck like, oh, God, this one's too hard. Well, hey, let's see what these modifiers do. In I've, this I've heard they, especially with the Age of Triumph content, which is basically the last piece. They've already said it's the last piece of content that Destiny 1 will get before Destiny 2. Mm-hmm. They've, um, they've talked about a couple of things that are coming back. Um, I don't. As much as I love the idea of, and P, I, I don't think this is the developer's fault. We're talking about gameplay and weapons, particularly. Mm-hmm. It's I don't think it's the developer's fault. I think it's the community's fault. When we progress to a next expansion, leave the old weapons behind. I am used to the fact of like, okay, we got a new expansion. Let's go get some. Let, we're gonna work. Oh, my Galahorn, get... my Galahorn. <laughs> I gotta get my Galahorn. I want the game. I want the weapon that breaks the game. All right, you need to calm down. Over there. And. <laughs> Second of all, anyone listening to this who's never played an MMO, grow up, shit changes, you need to adapt your oh gear. Oh my, that was very pointed language. I mean, it's, no, it's like, okay to be it, attached to a gun. I think a transmog system would be cool. Like, but, and, not even a transmog. But we don't even have that. So it's like, look, you just got to let the attachment go. You got to get different tools to attack a different or, or Not even, even just a transmog, maybe a system where like it's going to be a little bit harder. But if you do this other quest, you have to work harder and you can get these tools to take your weapon and upgrade it. But maybe not to the extent that, to the I say the ease or extent that they've had in this game so far. Because I remember that in the Taken King, how it wasn't hard. It should be like if you want to keep your weapon. Number one, it should not. If you, it should be hard to upgrade that to a year two equivalent. And I think that it should not be as viable as maybe like some other options that are out there, especially in the. Do you guys remember the conspiracy theory around the, the, the Taken King, whatever that gun was, that pulse rifle. Do you remember what I'm talking about? The stranger's about? rifle? Not the no, stranger's no, no. rifle. I, I have the gun you're talking about, and that was fucking amazing. The, the, the ghost hunt that that was. Yeah, um, like the, the, the weird gun. I can't no, remember no, no, the name it, of it. It's the All only the... heavy fusion rifle in the game. Yeah! You yes. know what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I, w- I was part of that group, but everybody was going insane, pulling their hair out, trying to find I was, it. I was with you. We were searching. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, like, that's the type of like, community building of stuff that. would be awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. More of that would be awesome. I, I have a question posing. It's something that I think, especially with Destiny 2 coming, that we do need to talk about mm-hmm. is PC. I, I think that, I think instead of asking, is it coming to PC? I feel like all of us are under a pretty good assumption that it is coming to PC. And what do you think, what do we think that's going to do for Destiny 2 if it does come to PC? It will give it very long life. If it does go to PC, it's going to be one of those where once. <sighs> It's going to be an interesting setup because PC shooters tend to last longer than console shooters. 
and a significant, could, and depend, a significant depending, way. depending on it. The PC yeah. market is a lot louder and busier, but yeah, it's true. But look at Counter Strike. Perfect example. If you can, I mean, Counter Strike's a almost perfect game. So, what do you <laughs> what, what do you think the CT stands for in CT Gamer? Cool counter terrorist top hat. <laughs> counter terrorists win. Um, no, so but look look at Counter Strike as an example. Now it's nowhere near the same game, but it's a shooter on the PC. If it can actually get legs like Counter Strike. Money for days. So I'm gonna sell rifle skins for sixty dollars in Destiny. I mean, they kind of already do that with the Eververse Trading Company. Ooh. Um, do, rip. do you think that it will? Do you think if it's released on PC, it will be a PC game, and like people will flock to the PC version? I I have a no. hunch. I have a hunch. Oh no, people will flock to the PC version. There, there. Yeah, if there's a PC version, I would very, very very likely say that the PC version would be the biggest announcement from this whole thing. Like it, Bungie's never done a PC game that's, since Halo. That, that wasn't even a real, like I was going to say originally that was a Mac only game. That was a Mac, but they like did, the did. original Halo came out on PC. It was completely rebuilt for did, that. Yeah. Didn't they do Halo three for PC? No. no. Or did they, they ported it after the fact. Hey, no, no, Halo three is not even on PC. No. Um, Halo two, Halo two. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, PC would be a big deal. I do have a theory. I think that that Mr. Phil Spencer has visited Bungie, and I believe, I do believe this could be an Xbox Play Anywhere game. I feel like this is an... That would be huge. This is an important game to have set an example for the power of Play Anywhere. If it were to have Play Anywhere, I think that would be a convincing... Now, of course, there's going to be your Steam people who buy things on Steam regardless. That's okay. There will probably be a Steam version, but I do think that for the Xbox strategy, speaking as the Xbox person and as the Xbox strategy, you should be fighting for every tooth and nail to make this a play anywhere title. The the big kicker there, and I don't disagree with you because that that would be huge. Is that if they try some BS of like Windows Store players can't play with steam players that is that's, that that's is going to be scum. that is a seth turner 100 percent guarantee that the steam the steam version of every game stands on an island because the steam version is built for like it's scrapped together like it is built using whatever tools are there whereas the windows version has to comply with a very specific set of rules so there will be no cross play there the steam version will have its own like if it if that's the case the, yeah now the crazy thing and this is up to bungie is whether or not they want to try and put this whether they want to look down the barrel of this gun or not, is will this be a Windows Store only release to the PC well, market? Not a chance. If, you don't if, think so? If if they put it on no. PC, it will be on Steam. You 100%. think so? Okay. Cameron Kearns, guarantee. Okay. And you know why? Why? Because Activision bankrolled it. And because they, at what least... Is, usually we can tell. What has Activision released recently that's that was cross-platform? Call, Call of Duty. Duty. Call of Duty. That's probably they always the do a Steam. One. Yeah, they always do a Steam. And, and that's that, so. that, at least, especially for them, they're going into an unknown platform. And and I, I, I hate saying it like that, but it's the truth. Where is the, where's your player base on the PC? Steam. They they would, they would make... literally shoot themselves in the foot and feel like the PC version is wasted if they made it a Windows Store exclusive. Now, if Phil Spencer gave them enough financial incentive to do that, then it, at the end of the day, I think it would have created a lot of drama. Though I don't think it would. Have oh, oh yeah, dude. That people, no. Like video game news sites would. But if you take make it, if bank. you make it where you get it for free for buying it digitally on Xbox One, I think that's a big deal. That's that's a that would be deal. that would be huge in third showing third party support. Like and, I feel like and make that cross play between Xbox One players and Windows Store players. There you go. Mm, there I got something go. even crazier that will unlikely happen. Xbox and PlayStation can play together. <laughs> now. Hear me uh, out. It's, I mean, it's possible. No, it's actually possible. <laughs> <I can't even. laughs> Microsoft said they are open to the network support, and Sony has allowed people cross cross device multiplayer. Can't before. Too much. Do do I need to? Re- well, let me remind you: this is the company who paid to block off content from the game that was already content starved to their platform. Yeah. Oh man, that was great. I'm sorry, listeners. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're 
No, like I, I love, said, I love that idea as much as you do. I, mean, I wish we could it, all just it say would be kumbaya. Great. No, would, I, I'm not saying kumbaya. I just want to meet you while you're playing on your Xbox. Say, how much does it suck to not have this gun and then shoot you in the head with it? Jade Rabbit, baby. <laughs> blah, blah. What like, now? <laughs> what are what language are you even speaking? <laughs> you don't know what uh, the Jade Rabbit is? No, they didn't. I know what the Jade Rabbit <laughs> is. They but... didn't get the Jade Rabbit. No, I, no, they didn't. I don't no. think they get it. No, they didn't get it. It's Xbox Play Anywhere. I think it will be an Xbox Play Anywhere title. Eh. I think it'll be a Steam. I think it, there's basically it's, look at Resident Evil. Let me let me go into it. Be, it's going to be Xbox Play Anywhere. Then on the PS4, it's going to be PS4 Pro Enhanced. Of course it will. And then on the PC, it'll be the old the ultimate so, 4K experience. <laughs> rubs rubs nipples. <laughs> 8K. The so here's my here's my ultimate question. We're almost out of time, but here's my ultimate question. Will this launch with major Scorpio functionality? No. Yes. Will Scorpio play into this at all? If it, if, if the bets, my, my thoughts, if the bets of Xbox play anywhere are true, if it, if that comes into fruition, then they're going to make sure that it ties in the same as middle earth shadow of war ties into where Xbox play anywhere also means Scorpio support. And I, it, it, if they're putting it on PC, then they will have enough of the expansion like 4K and up, up oh. res textures and resolutions to be on Scorpio. And to be fair, if they can do PS4 Pro support, yeah, it's 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 going to be. It's just new. will Sony pay them the money to? That's not? that's <laughs> one of my my thoughts. There is is Sony going to pay an extra bankroll? Like, look, why don't you not support the Scorpio and just only support PS4 Pro? Which I think is kind of scummy. Like as the, it, well, as the resident think, PlayStation I, guy, I that's, that's I would, coming. I would believe that a little bit more if they were not bringing it to PC. When you bring it to like, imagine if they say we're bringing Destiny to PC, but wait, we're still locking a strike down on PS4. That blows up in your face yep. badly because you're trying to enter a new market, but then you're like, oh, but you're not good enough to get the new stuff. Yep. And you can't say, well, PC and PS4 gets it because who's going to pay for that? Because PC is still Microsoft. Like that's win win for. I think that if 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 they're going to do PS4 Pro and they're going to do PC, that's the big one. If they do PC, then PS4 Pro and Scorpio will get enhanced. It could be our first major release that is PS4 Pro, Scorpio, and PC optimized, that like okay. out the door. That's and that's an exciting, an exciting uh, premise to follow. <sighs> Jesus, so. that means I'm going to have to buy a 4K TV before this comes out. Of course. I mean, I already have a saving. I already have a thing. $5 a day from my account goes into a <laughs> side account that is used specifically for purchasing either a new PC or a 4K TV with whatever professional HDR HDR bullshit whatever, yeah, yeah, we get. So we'll find out. But again, I said it last year. I'll say it again this year. E3 is going to be good. It's going to be a good E3. They talk, apparently, there was a rumor today as of its recording that Nintendo has so many games to talk about for the Switch for E3, so. They're going to do a sizzle reel with a 87 indie games that have been on Steam for two years plus. Look, man, if I see Wargroove on there, I'm I'm okay. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Wargroove is enough, man. You're talking to the two guys that were playing it. I'll say, hey, I'm just going to share a quick PAX East story real quick, because Nintendo was at PAX East, and their booth was weird. It was weird. <laughs> I was next to the booth. I spent a lot of time uh, walking around, but the Twitch booth was right next to the the um, Nintendo booth. And boy, that that thing was weird. It was like a, a airplane cabin, and then a a restaurant, like a diner. It was like the M diner with the Mario M. And but it was weird because they had like influencers, like Twitch streamers, up on the stage, like hosting Mario Kart tournaments. And they were like, they were like, all right, who's going to win? And it's like the, kind of this hype man for this Mario Kart tournament, which is what you want. But then it's surrounded by these cartoon characters, <laughs> literally like Mario mm. things everywhere. Mm. And I'm just, I'm like, I have an identity crisis. It doesn't matter. Let me play Splatoon 2, please. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you can wait here four hours. I was like, nope. It's okay. You're going to play Splatoon 2 anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they just had their global test fire, which happened at 2 p.m. our time. They had the most, that the, they approached that so horribly, so <sighs> they horribly. They should have just had the whole weekend open. Yeah, I, I know it's Nintendo, and maybe they were scared of their network infrastructure, but they did that really poorly. Very poorly. Well, I would be scared of my network infrastructure if, you know, I had more than 2 million of my consoles floating out there. <laughs> <laughs> Considering no one has a Switch, there's no worry for you. There's no stress for you. Anyways. 
Um, you mean how people can't find them because they're sold out? They're gone unless you're a Prime member. <laughs> <laughs> that's the scummiest thing ever ah it's whatever man it's whatever uh i mean okay. i still have prime because i want to watch the guys from top gear in their non-top gear thing but that's still. it yeah <laughs> um well yeah definitely let us know what you think should be in destiny 2 you can tweet us at rocket punch go to let us know what that is of course as always all of the rocket punch goodies can be found at rocketpunchgo.com. that is your one-stop shop for all things rocket punch if you want to follow me personally on Twitter, I am at Darth Turner. Hey, it's Will, and I'm at CT uh, bleh, at CT Gamer. Sorry. And if you want to argue with me about my thoughts on Destiny Two, I'm at C Kearns. We can go at it any day of the week, and I'm, I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. Yeah. Send all of your PlayStation shade over to at Darth Turner. <laughs> Send all of your Xbox shade. Over to at C. I'll Kearns. send it directly to C. Kearns, probably live during this podcast. <laughs> I'll just pull my phone out and read it. That'll be our intro for next week. But yeah, send it on over. We have a big episode 60 planned next week. So make sure you join us next week, uh, next Tuesday, uh, when the episode goes live. We're going to have some cool stuff that we, uh, that we get ready for you there. So um, as always, thank you very much. If you want to support us even more and you want even more rocket punch, of course we bring you most of our content totally free through the podcast feed and on youtube.com slash rocket punch go. You can also head to patreon.com slash rocket punch where you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. That helps us grow. It helps us maintain our equipment, keep our website up, et cetera, et cetera. But if you support us at $3 or more, you get exclusive access to a bonus episode of tank and spank our blizzard focused podcast and a bonus episode of the rocket punch cast so noise noise <laughs> very good very they're good. very good discussions and we we goof there is 42 percent more random ass shit in, shenanigans in in, in 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 those in the patreon exclusive ones ask the patreon members they'll tell you all about it. it's great so head over there three dollars a month get you that five dollars a month get you swag oh yeah i said swag all the way up to the Rocket Punch shirt at $25. Boom. You know what else five bucks gets you? What? A bonus episode of Creator Spotlight. It's good. Or not mm. episode questions. Yes. Sorry. All the behind that. the scenes questions are always good. Creator Spotlight bonus questions are... They're really good. Not to be <laughs> That last That's one $5 was $5 phenomenal. Yeah, we, we, we've had some good ones on this yeah. so far. And so what's great is once you, once you contribute, you don't have to wait for the next episode. You can go back and listen to all the previous episodes right out of the gate. So it's really, really cool. Um, but anyways, this is it. This is episode 59. 59. 59. Let's go. That just made me mm. thought, think like, what happens when we get to 69? Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> Mass I'm Effect gonna, quotes everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to host the whole episode with this voice right here. <laughs> He's going to try to Captain Kirkus run. I'm going to let you know that every single word will have Eyebrow raising. <laughs> you can't see it, but he's doing it. He's Listen, doing it. I'm going to make sure that we earn the expletive rating on episode 69. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be good. But that's 10 weeks away, so we have time to prepare all of our gutter jokes and trash humor that we won't prepare for that episode. Anyways, thank you so much. It has been awesome to have you back for another week. Until next time, farewell. <laughs>